anyway, we're back. I got interrupt technology. As soon as you start talking about nerds, you know, hey, the technology people, nerds, you know. But I was saying that because I'm in South Africa, when I came here, I realized there's a, when I'm looking at Netflix or scrolling through Netflix, they've got a lot of foreign programs on these things. They, they're trying to oh, bombard yes, you. Of a lot of South African stuff. I'm going like, what? Yes. Well, first of all, you, let me just tell you this about South Africa and Africa. Africa is the largest producing uh, film industry in the world. If they, they pass Bollywood? They, 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 yeah, they pass Bollywood. Nollywood produces more films than any other film industry on the planet. So there's so much content. And, you know, sure, just like any other output, you know, source, not all of it is good, but there's enough there. I think that's also going to start changing the narrative because forever studios, if you make an American film, no matter how popular your black film was for many years, mm. you know, the, the thinking was, and I can tell you this as a filmmaker too, oh, black films don't travel. Yeah, so sure. you never got international. Yeah. So you live and die by, by domestic. Yeah. But now, and Black Panther is what changed that. Now, what that's really saying or what they said for a long time is that black stories don't matter. Black lives don't matter. That who cares about, you know, your stories? Now we're seeing not only do they matter, but people are eating it up. Yeah, but you know what's happening? I know in Cape Town there's a big, a big sound stage they had built years back. And so, so they have yeah. the inf they have infrastructure in Cape Town. They have infrastructure yes, because of, because of, of soap opera. They have infrastructure in Johannesburg. Of course, what's what's good about the Nigerian actually it's Nigerian you can basically say Nigerian Ghana. They sort of uh, getting it to, together. Uh, but what happens is, is these filmmakers are getting are uh, getting skills. That's what's really happening. They're, they're getting Absolutely. skills. They're getting skills. Yes. skills. As soon as they get skills and they can get the infrastructure. Then you then then you then you go. Where I am, where I am in Dambaza, um, uh, uh, we we have. It's almost like they could have a film industry right there. They, they because they they got a small airstrip. They, they you can get there by train, bus. You know by plane you can go. You know you you can isolate on a week or like a, film for like four days, and then on a weekend send everybody to Johannesburg or or Cape Town just to have fun, and then you can have your crew just work work for four days straight. There's all kinds of scenarios that can happen and it's a quite an interesting area, you know. Wow. But, but let wow. me not let me not give wow. these, these people any ideas. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. So, so, you yeah. get back over there and it's already done. Well, you know, I, I'm you know I'm not a money person. I don't, I don't really deal with that. But I want to get to I want to get to one other thing with you and that's really about the, the job of the critic, what you do. But before I I, I got the book it's called, it's called, uh, uh, I guess, B-R-E-A-T-H. What's that, breath? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess your breath would be the E at the end, so breath. That's right, yeah. I get confused, man. I'm a reader, not, not a, I'm a reader as, as words on a page. I don't care how it looks on a page in my head. I just say whatever <laughs> I want to say. It's called the New, <laughs> the New Science of a Lost Art by James Nestor. And I'm telling you, man, this book is unbelievable. I showed up to my camera, so it's going to be backwards. But it's it's uh, look, man. Spend the how much does this cost? Twenty eight twenty eight dollars. Spend the thirty dollars on it. It will change your life, man. But I, I you know I guess it's going to come out and pay back sooner or later. But it's un. It's just interesting. It's interesting. Just, any, any passage you want to read me? Well, I I read some passages before. Let me let me I'll go to where I am right now. Let me say. Uh, um, okay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to do something. Let me go back to something. Uh, this guy, uh, he's invented this machine that, that changes your jaw, you know, uh, so you're, uh, because basically our mouths are too small, right? And he said, after, okay. after, dec after decades of experimentation and collecting case studies of seeing his patients' mouths and faces grow younger, the older they got, uh, Belfort, that's that guy's name, decided that the conventional science of bone loss was in his words, well, total, I'm going to say, just say BS because I don't curse, you know? But what, 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 what he's saying that they, 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 you know, they, a lot of these, a lot of people they cite in this book have gone against convention. It wasn't even doctors and stuff like that. But he's saying that we think that the, the, the bones after a certain age, you know, they deteriorate. They don't, they don't, don't change. Whatever have you. But what happens really is that is, is is the bones you still have uh, you still have these sutures like 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 in your brain in your in your head, and as you exercise them, that they, they, they basically your stem cells get exercised. You see, interesting. So, interesting. Okay. And so you 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 actually can grow new bones. 
Unlike, unlike other bones in the body, the bone that makes up the center of the face, called the maxilla, M-A-X-I-L-L-L, -L -L, M A X I L L A, I'm sorry, uh, is made of membrane bone that is highly plastic. The max maxilla uh, can remodel and grow more dense into our 70s, it likely longer. Even into your 70s, your bones can still re regenerate, I guess what you're saying. Uh, you, you, me, whoever, we can grow bones at any age, Belfort told me. All we need are stem cells, and the way we produce and signal stem cells is to build more maxilla, max, uh, maxilla uh, bone in the face as we engage the, this, the he's been vegetative you know, meister, by clamping down on the back of the molars over and over. In other words, if you, if you clamp down on the back of your teeth over and over, right, then that's going to stimulate more, more, more bone growth. Interesting. Uh, basically, Interesting. It, says, it says chewing. The more we gnaw, the, the the more we gnaw, the more stem cells release, the more bone density and growth will trigger. The younger we'll look, uh, the better we breathe. That's there. It is right there. You know. Interesting. 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 But, Interesting. but this thing, he you addresses know, it, everything from it, asthma, a, a, a sleep apnea, all the rest of the stuff is, is hooked up in this breathing thing. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, I'm just blown away, totally blown away, to tell you the truth, you know. Interesting. It's, well, it makes a lot of sense on a lot of levels. I mean, you know, we can exist without water for a while. We can exist without food for a while. But we can only exist for uh, 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 some seconds without air. Mm -hmm. They they go into a whole lot of stuff about the breathing techniques, you know uh, how you know the, the, the those divers off wherever they're diving off they can hold their breath for like twenty minutes and stuff like that, you know. And I think the longest thing that like David Blaine and the musicians, um, magicians can do is like seventeen minutes. So it's all the stuff is possible, you know. So anyway, so I wanted to bring that to you, but let let, let me go into to, to your 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 you know your expertise. How is this whole landscape changing? Um, Film criticism, you know, uh, what, you know, how, you know, what's going on? You know, that, well, that's an interesting question because uh, I, I never liked getting links, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, if I couldn't, you know, see it on my, you know, smart Blu-ray player, then that meant I had to watch it on my computer. I never liked that. I, and I prefer watching movies in the theater. So now, that's all gone away. Yeah. Okay. And two, th two stories I'll tell you. The very last uh, theater uh, experience, that, or last screening I went to, this is three days before the lockdown. This is back in March. Mm. Okay. Uh, I went to the screening at the Lincoln Square, which is probably the biggest movie theater in uh, Manhattan. Mm. And 20 minutes into the movie, these two women got into it. Mm. And it was one was like, get away. You bring it on my child. I am not breathing on your child. Yes, you are. Ah, but you, who you, bitch, bitch, who you go? And they almost went to blows. Mm. And they went on for a good solid seven, eight minutes. The whole audience was trying to shush them, telling them, you know, to calm down. And this is prior to, you know, the lockdown. This is when people didn't really know. They were just kind of hearing all kinds of information. Mm. Is it traveling through the breath? They weren't telling you to wear masks. Mm. So... That was like, wow, that's a precursor to how it could be if, mm. you know, let's just say people come into conflict with what they know, how they're acting, mm. their consideration, all that. Then, for a while, the studios really didn't know what they were going to do. You know, they postponed. I think people thought it was going to last a couple months and then go away. And now, what we're seeing, for, for me, I'll give you an example. Today, I have a film I have to watch. It's Bill and Ted you know, the latest yeah. incarnation. Uh -huh. And what I'm seeing happen is they send me a link, but they tell me what time I can watch the link. Uh, Hold on, that can I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. I get, I get interrupts on this, there people coming in and out. I, all of a sudden, this is a, a Grand Central Station, and usually <laughs> just, usually this is like the quiet area of the house. I'm going like, oh, okay. I get, I get, di I get different uh, reality. I get different studios, <laughs> different set pieces. All right. Yeah. So, I'm happy to hear. But what I was going to say is so they only give me a, a window. It's, it's almost like going to a screen, a window for when I can watch the link. If I don't watch it in that window, the link will no longer be good. So it's kind of an interesting... Uh, I, I, I guess they I guess they don't want to bootleg it or something like that. I don't, well, yeah, that, that's the concern. These are big films, 
you know, that so they all have some sort of encrypted link mm. for you, and some of them, like, they, they send you the link, and then you have to kind of get, uh, and then they have to text you on your phone, and then mm. you have to put in the code, and, yeah, it's pretty complex. Mm. So for as a critic, it's become very much a, you know, and then you have to reach out and make sure and get all the assets and all that stuff, so... Mm. But there's, it, it, for me, it just means I'm watching anywhere from four to six films a week. Hmm. And that's what I have to review. And then doing interviews, the, what's interesting is everything is done via phone, via Zoom. Yeah. Via, I've been on Zoom so much, it's, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So I'm like, I, 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 I don't know if you know, I teach a film. Uh, filmmaking course, I took yeah. the whole thing on Zoom, yeah. which is kind of the way things are now. So I can't do the so, yeah, all the interviews I did interviews for the Five Bloods with Spike Lee and the whole cast and whatnot was all Zoom. Yeah, so yeah. that's the future. Yeah. Well, right now, for instance, I, I I'm still the radio model. I have you, I have you on the phone. I'm on camera, but that's as far as I would go. But I do that for a reason because a lot of people I talk to. I want people to, to not, I, because you, there's a certain prejudice you have when you see somebody, you know, you see what I'm saying? So I'd rather, I'd rather that not happen, you know? You, you understand what I'm saying? I do. Now, are you live? No, I'm not live. I, don't, I, I just recorded, then I put it up on a YouTube channel. My YouTube is not monetized, by the way, and I have uh, creative comments. I have very few people on, on my, as, as follow me, stuff like that. I do do Instagram, but that's something else. I don't do these long interviews. Inter, it's Instagram. But remember, I did YouTube because YouTube, to me, was for archival purposes only. I, 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 I'm an archivist. Oh, I say archivist. They say archivist. I don't care. But, uh, but, but the thing is, this is not for now. This is not for me. This is not for you and I. I actually put it this way. I'm looking at this as history. In other words, if we wanted to find out what, 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 Ida, B, uh, what Ida B. Wells was doing, we'd have to look at some newspaper, you know what I mean? And if she wasn't writing in the newspaper, we won't know what's going on through her perspective back then. But now everybody can sort of record their experiences. They can do that. So like 20 years from now, or I say 100 years from now, when they're trying to look up the history of what happened, they'll say, hey, that Mike Sargent guy, he, he, was a, he, that's what, yeah, he talked about that Walmart thing. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah, that's what was happening. Then, you know, or whatever, you know, that whole story she said about this. And I think that's more valuable, you see. So my whole thing has always been, I'm not talking to us right now. I'm talking to the 25 million, thousand, thousand million people, you know, 25,000 million years from now. It's just, just all it is, you know. But everybody wants to make money, and I, you know, I don't, yeah, I'm not into it. You know, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm what I am. You know, so it's interesting that you say that everything is Zoom because I don't, I don't believe in Zoom either. I, I can't, I can't do my craft. My craft is audio drama, but part of my audio drama thing is about the the therapy of the rehearsal, the therapy. Of, of even just creating the script, the therapy of pe people coming together, the therapy of the human contact, you know? And so until this thing blows over, I, and there's no way I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a Zoom and audio drama. Don't get me wrong, I can do certain things, but I, I, it's just not what I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be old fashioned, it's just not, it's just not what it is. Uh, I guess you're, you're easy, but your class, how is that going? I don't understand, how, how is that Zoom class going? Well, it's done, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, it's done now, but I have been teaching this filmmaking class for the last five years, and it it was like a you know it's a, a, a twenty or twenty four uh, uh, class uh, course, uh, create the syllabus and everything. But then when the when the COVID happened, they were like, oh, what are we going to do? Now this was like in February, March. They were asking, you know, they were thinking, oh, we have to postpone. And I said, no, we can just do it online. So what I had to do was find a way, and we ended up getting students, by the way, from all. Uh, as opposed to just locally here in New York. But uh, what I was able to do was find a way not only to teach the course, but through Zoom. Zoom allows you, if you have what they call a PTZ camera, which is pan tilt zoom, you can, I could, if you had a PTZ camera right now on you, I could, and we were on Zoom, I could control your camera. If you give me access, I can control the pan, the tilt, the zoom on your camera. So I was, we were able to make a film assign, you know, who the director is, who the editor is, who the lighting person is, and, you know, we developed a script that could be done mm -hmm. via 
via Zoom from different people in different locations all around the country, uh, and we and we made the film. So really? we made a short film that was directed via Zoom, shot via Zoom, and lighted, lit, and everything, and rehearsed everything via Zoom. Wow. Now that sounds. I, I'm not opposed to that. Don't get me wrong. But remember, that's the film medium. My problem. My my own. I'm, I'm, I, I, that that's great. Let me just say that that is great. But my problem is that the the theater, you know what I mean? When I say audio drama, I'm really talking theater. There's some yeah, elements, there's the elements I need that that's therapeutic. But the, I, I love that idea because, I, it, plus the worldwide aspect, you know what I mean? I had this vision one time, and they, they sort of achieved it when they when they had the, the turn of the, the century or whatever have you, when they were showing the, what was happening. They, they do it all the time now. Every New Year's Eve, they go from one time zone to another. I had this idea to do audio drama that they would start in one time zone and it would, it would, it would in every time zone, it would, it would advance the audio drama. The, 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 the whole thing would, would advance all the way, you know, all the way right, right to, I guess from Japan to, 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 um, to, to uh, not Alaska, Japan to Hawaii. You know, that, that, that would be right. the, the circuit, you know? I mean, that could still happen. Of course, something like that could happen, you know? It's just logistics. Well, now, it, nowadays, it would be easier than ever because nowadays, you know, uh, the other thing that's interesting that you, you're saying here uh, is that, uh, forget the Zoom. Hmm. What has happened, the real explosion, to coming back to audio, is podcasts. Sure. And podcasts, in my opinion, are just radio to go. That's all it is. The only yeah. reason it's even called podcast as opposed to a broadcast is because of the iPod. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is all of these platforms have come about mm -hmm. that make it easy or, or better or more efficient for you to record and do audio from mm -hmm. multiple sources, from multiple people's setups. Yeah. Uh, so that's what's been interesting because I've been producing some mm -hmm. podcasts for people and dude, it's it's kind of amazing. So, well, now I, I you know, know what you're saying. Of? I know what you're saying. This is this right now. I, I it should be called a transmission. That's all it is. This is trans. Right now, yeah. right now. Let yeah. me take my glasses off here. You, you can't. Yeah, just take my glasses off. But you see, we're doing a podcast right now. But see, the, yes, here's the trick. Are. Here's the trick. We're radio people, so we know certain things. The people that's doing sure. the, the reason why you can be so successful at, at direct at teach me these podcasts because you're you're radio trained. All these transmissions are, are basically this is radio, and and people are, they have some certain. I hear some podcasts they're terrible. I mean, some people are doing it's just terrible because they yeah. don't understand the medium of radio. Just yeah. a, just the concept of no dead air, or just or just the concept of don't reveal your you know, people are coming in all the time. Yeah. You don't have to reveal the technical problems that you're having and all the kinds of yeah. things like that. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And let I, me tell I, you I, something. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Mike. I have to say this because it's on my head. I just did a thing on Donald Trump, right? And I realized, I mean, I'm gonna be in trouble for this one because I ain't gonna tell you. What you, you have to look. You have to look at my my my, my YouTube channel. It, it, it just got up. It's, it's about. It, I think it's called uh, the the something like the John something. It's called John something. John is in the title. Any rate, but here's the thing: when Donald Trump went down those steps, and instead of doing a seven minute, you know, uh, spiel about his announcement of of his. Um, you know, of his candidacy. He did 48 minutes. That's a TV program. That is a transmission. That is a podcast. So he did a podcast. Podcast just means that the people will engage you for longer than you think. They're not into that they're, they're 15 minutes or whatever. They're, they're, most podcasts are two hours, at least. Or, or one hour, one hour to two hours. You usually have one hour or whatever. Then they make take one, one hour phone calls. But the point is, people... People have longer time spans than people they realize, and they're not doing this. These it's hits. Joe Rogan, it's just four-hour podcast. Yeah, it is because if you're engaged, because if you're talking to one person and you're getting into the. Right. I learned about this book, this James Nestor, you know, a uh, uh, breath book from from Joe, from Joe Rogan, from the guy who was on Joe Rogan. That's why I learned from it, and then I looked him up or whatever have it. But the whole real point I'm trying to say is that. People's long, they, they keep on saying, oh, they have no time, they, they, they're they not interested, and in, 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 they have to hit them real quick, da 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 But that's the thinking of these people that have been sitting up in these in these suites for so long. They're not in touch with anything. One of my favorite uh, persons is, is, is Michi X. <laughs> she is amazing. The intellect that she has. Now, she's just talking into the camera, cursing all the time. You know, whoa. <laughs> it's going like, this is magnificent, you know? So anyway... So, I, but I'm glad you told me about that 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 whole thing about 
about the, 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 the sound because sound is always it. It's the it's the bottom line. That's the whole thing. Absolutely. You know. Okay, so what's what's Absolutely. what's on what's on your your agenda? What's your I, I have to sort of check in with you every two or three months, I guess, because things are changing now. I just like talking to you. When we did that whole thing with Joker, man, that was like amazing to me. It was just really, it was a different yes, perspective. Yeah, but it was a different perspective that anybody had, I think. But then it just you've given me some information right now that that's great. I think the landscape's going to change now, whatever. Maybe I can call you in a couple of months, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but but we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, stay in touch. Well, I definitely think the landscape is changing, and I think what's interesting to me about podcasts is that you know people are raving about podcasts, and like I said, to me, it's just radio to go. It's just reminding people of how powerful radio is. It's still radio. You can call it podcast. As far as I'm concerned, it's all radio. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm. It's just radio without the station, and <laughs> and now, like I said, we live in this a la carte society. You know, if you're really into, you know, Oatmeal Delumpifiers, there's a podcast on Oatmeal Delumpifiers, and you can find, you know, hey, and, you know, and the experts on it are on there, you know? Mm -hmm. So whatever you're into, whatever your niche is, you can find your audience, or your audience will find you. But let me tell you one more thing, because like I said, I did this thing just basically, I'm trying to, it's like, it's almost like my memoirs. <laughs> it's just like my memoirs on tape. And you know, you, because you, because you can go from, how do you say, you can go from, 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 um, from audio to text. You know, there's software to do that. I basically have books. I can just write out, do that, and then, then edit my memoirs if I want to put out in some sort of book form. But here's the other thing. Well, I did this both for, when, when, when I first learned about Black Panther, since you mentioned Black Panther earlier, I started, uh, um, transmitting on, on my ideas about Black Panther, you know, some things were wrong, theories were right, but you can, you can, you can basically uh, t uh, uh, track the the how I how I view Black Panther over the weeks that it happened. You know what I mean? In real, it's like I would say in real time, well, in real time. But that, that's a whole thing on that. Right now, I'm involved with ADOS. You can track from what I understood when I first started with ADOS, almost like two years ago. You can track my whole thing. Even before that, when I was talking to James Small about we, we have to have a name, we have to name ourselves. So you can track my development in this thing or my perspective of how it has developed to this particular point. And it's fascinating to me because th this is a whole course. This is a whole a journey of one person's journey. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 and everybody has their own journeys to certain things. And that's, that's what it's about, I think. You know, the modern community. Well, I think, you know, again, I think what I was saying before, about storytelling, hmm. you know, the best stories are stories that are small stories that have a much larger impact, a much larger significance. Hmm. So, you know, you you may be one individual, but, you know, you, you have not only perspectives and experience that inform your opinions, but like you said, people can relate to the journey. Hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, again, unless I miss my guess, you're human. <laughs> you start out with that alien thing. I, I'm not going down that rat. I'm not. Go, I'm not going down that. I'm not going down that black hole or that space or whatever you all. Whatever. How are your nerds talk about that? Look, Mike Sargent. Thanks so much for talking to me, man. I'll hey, well, thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you in a couple of months or something like that. We'll see what happens. How the landscape changes, you know. You'll all see right, what happens. I'm here. All right, man. Take care. All right. You too. Later.